Hi, my name is Kevin Wilkinghoff. I work at Fraunhofer FKIE, and this is my talk about using look, listen, and learn embeddings for detecting anomalous sounds in machine condition monitoring. I will first start with a task description, which is basically a recapitulation of the DK's challenge task two. So um, the task consists of audio files belonging to six different machine types, fans, light rail, pump, toy car, toy conveyor, and valve. So for each of these machine types, there are seven different machines and each of them is fully functioning. And for each of these machines, we have 1000 recordings and each recording has a length of 10 seconds and a sampling rate of 16 kilohertz. Now the task is uh, when the system gets a new machine sound, a new recording with a known machine type and a known machine ID, the system needs to decide, um, does this audio file belong to a machine that works properly or not? The baseline system of the challenge uh, consists of the following steps. First, a Mel spectrogram is computed from the audio file with 128 Melvins, and then five consecutive frames are just stacked into one vector. And this vector is used as an input for an autoencoder, um, which is very basic, but has a very small um, um, bottleneck dimension of um, eight and the um, decoding step, and then uh, it is trained and minimizing the mean squared error. And after that, this error uh, can be used as a decision score because uh, the underlying assumption is that uh, files belonging to a normal machine um, have a low reconstruction error and files that belong to machines that are somehow um, yeah, defect or whatever um, have a very high reconstruction error because yeah, usually these sounds are unknown to the train system. Now I will describe my own system, which is based on look, listen, and learn embeddings. The network to extract these embeddings can be trained in a very large data set because it does not need labeled video data. And why is this the case? Because the only question the network is trained with is to predict whether a video frame or and an audio clip of one second belong together or not. Um, so when training the network, one can simply use one video and take a video frame and an audio clip of the same video uh, to create positive uh, samples. And one can take a video frame and an audio clip from different videos to create negative samples. Um, the network itself consists of two subnetworks, a video subnetwork and an audio subnetwork. And both are just convolutional neural networks um, and an additional fusion network which takes the vector size outputs of both subnetworks and um, decides whether they belong together or not. Um, in our implementation, we use OpenL3, which is pre-trained on a music subset of uh, audio set and consists of many samples. In this talk, by the term look, listen, and learn embeddings, we always mean uh, audio embeddings uh, which are just the output of the audio subnetwork and are 512 dimensional vectors. Here is an overview of the system I have used, uh, which is a, an adaption from an open set classification system uh, for machine listening um, applications and uh, is primarily based on X vector network uh, from uh, speaker recognition. So first, um, the audio file is converted to these uh, look, listen, and learn embeddings. And then the X vector network combines several look, listen, and learn embeddings, all belonging to one audio file into a single vector and concatenates this value with the mean um, look, listen, and learn embedding from one file. And so we have just one large vector and this vector is then processed further uh, until uh, in the end, uh, there's a lot likelihood ratio to decide, um, is this a normal audio file or is it anomalous? Now I will describe 
of each of these steps in detail. Um, on the right, there's a depiction of the um, structure of the X vector network. Um, it consists of several convolutions in time and two intermediate layers that compute the mean and the standard deviation of the output. And uh, both of these values are concatenated into a single vector. And this vector is um, then processed by a linear transformation and length normalized. And um, then these vectors are the so-called X vectors. And to train the network, these um, vectors are uh, used for classification. But when it is trained, um, yeah, just this intermediate layer is used to extract the X vectors. And so we have a way to combine all the uh, look, listen, and learn embeddings belonging to one audio file into a single vector. Uh, in speaker recognition, one is not using look, listen, learn embeddings, but uh, steps rule features as uh, MFCCs. Um, when training this network, I used a version of manifold mixup. Um, I think we all know mixup, uh, which is just a linear interpolation of uh, input samples. But um, in contrast to regular mixup, a manifold mixup is also used in the layers uh, in between. So uh, in the hidden representations of the data um, to just um, to have a way to augment the data even further. As said before, um, the resulting X vectors are then stacked with the means of the embeddings uh, belonging to um, single audio files. And one can also create an ensemble with a baseline system by just um, concatenating um, the mean squared error of one file um, to incorporate the information captured by the baseline system. And these large vectors are then further processed uh, by a whitening operation, uh, principal component analysis, uh, linear discriminant analysis, and normalization, which are all uh, very standard uh, methods. And then uh, another standard uh, speaker recognition method, which is called a probabilistic linear discriminant analysis model is used, which just um, models uh, the distribution of the representation uh, with two normal distributions. Using an intra-class covariance matrix and an inter-class covariance matrix. Um, the nice thing about this model is that uh, one can simply uh, calculate a log likelihood ratio um, as a result, which is very good um, to decide whether a sample is normal or anomalous uh, by simply using a threshold. Here are the experimental results. Um, first, for the development set, I depicted the area on the curve um, for all different classes with all different systems being used. And what is important is that this additional training data consists of recordings from machine IDs that are present in the validation set, but not present in the development set. So we have additional training data of the right machine type, but not from the exact same machines present in the uh, development set. So here are the conclusions one can draw from the picture. Um, first, the X vector based system outperforms the baseline system. And this is especially uh, visible for the class valve. And oh, the only exception is the toy conveyor. Um, yeah, but it's only slightly worse. Um, yeah, one can also see that the ensemble outperforms both subsystems, uh, except for the class valve, where it's slightly worse. And the most probable reason is that the baseline system has a, a much worse uh, performance than the X vector based system. And so the ensemble um, yeah, is a bit degraded by including the baseline system. Um, OK, so now using the additional data does not improve the results. Sometimes it's a bit better, sometimes it's a bit worse, but 
overall, there's no uh, clear indication what helps. And the reason is that, as I already said, the exact machine IDs do not match. And so it can be seen as uh, somehow noisy data, which does not really help in this case. Here are the results on the uh, evaluation set. And uh, though the numbers are different from before here, yeah, the global trend is the same. And so um, most of our uh, conclusions are also the same. Um, so the expected based system outperforms the baseline system. Um, here, the ensemble is still better than both subsystems, but there are more exceptions than before. Um, last time, only the class wealth was was a bit worse. But here, uh, yeah, there are more exceptions as, for example, toy car or toy conveyor is also worse than the baseline system. And again, additional data does not improve the results. Okay, now, a few words about the closed set classification performance. Um, first, uh, for the task at hand, it was not necessary to do any closed set classification because one always knew uh, beforehand which machine type and also which machine ID uh, an audio file belonged to. But um, it does not cost anything with our trained model. And in practice, it can help because, yeah. If one um, imagines that a worker is in some factory and has some recording device and just uh, records some machine, he does not need to select the machine beforehand in case there is perfect closed set classification. And he can also gather some additional information, um, such as the last maintenance check or uh, the production year of the machine um, in case the machine ID is um, also perfectly recognized. So in practice, it is very helpful. Here are the closed set classification accuracies uh, by machine type. And um, yeah, one can clearly see that the X-Vector system um, outperforms the baseline system. And this is also clear because the X-Factor system has been trained discriminatively to distinguish between the, those uh, machine types and the baseline system um, has not been trained that way. So yeah, it, it is the result one would expect. Um, another result is that the performance is degraded for anomalous data. And this is also clear because a fully functioning machines should be uh, should sound uh, very much alike, but when there's some defect in the machines and so we have anomalous data, um, yeah, the differences are far greater and so it's harder to predict the exact machine type. And now um, if we use additional data not belonging to the exact machine IDs, but to the correct machine type. Um, the performance also improves because we simply have more data, which is more diverse. And so especially for the evaluation data, the improvement is very large. But this is, again, because the additional training data has the exact same machine IDs um, used in the uh, present in the evaluation data. We can also do a closed set classification uh, by machine ID. So really say this is valve number one, this is valve number two. Here we see the same trends when um, anomalous data is encountered. The performance is much worse than uh, when normal data is encountered. And again, for normal data, the performance is uh, really, really good. And here using additional data, which does not match the exact machine IDs, um, slightly degrades the performance. So here are the conclusions. Um, the presented system um, significantly outperforms the baseline system, um, both when detecting anomalous sounds and when detecting uh, the machine type or exact machine ID. And 
Furthermore, ensembling the presented system and the baseline system improves the performance. Uh, for future work, one can compare or combine um, the X vector based system with a regularly trained X vector model. So using uh, sepsural features as MFCCs. One can also try other loss functions uh, that do not enforce a discriminative behavior on the X vectors um, because maybe some important information is lost um, when doing so. And thus other loss functions might help to uh, recognize anomalous data. Um, one can also replace the LEA function with a non-discriminative te technique and as last uh, improvement, one can also replace the baseline system with a more sophisticated order encoder. Okay, thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and I will uh, try to answer them. Thanks.